Hey there. Today I'll show you how to create a quiz to boost customer engagement for your online store. In this example, customers will answer simple questions about who they're shopping for. Based on their responses, the site will offer product recommendations. Before you begin, check to make sure Wix code is enabled. Click Code and turn on Developer Tools. Then click My Store on the left to view and manage your products. For this example, we'll use the store's default products. To start, create a new database collection and name it Product Keywords. This collection will be used to manage keywords for all your products. In the collection, add a new field. Change its field name to Product. Because this column will contain references to the items in your product collection, set the field type to Reference and choose Products as the referenced collection. Next, add another field. Change its field name to Keywords and set the field type to Text. For this field, you'll manually enter a list of keywords related to each product. Click the Field Settings icon here and set this field to be your primary field. Then, delete the default title field. Now add your products and give each item a few keywords, like a color or who'd love the gift. When entering your keywords, separate them using a comma without spaces. Once your collection is ready, set up your quiz. In the editor, click Add. Go to Interactive and add a full width slideshow to your page. Then click Settings. By default, slideshows are set to autoplay. But in your quiz, buttons will be used to direct customers to the next slide. So turn off autoplay by sliding the toggle here. Then click Layouts to hide the arrows and buttons in your slideshow. Under Navigation Arrows, slide the toggle here to turn off Show Navigation Arrows. And under Slide Buttons, turn off Show Slide Buttons. Then click Change Slide Background to customize your slideshow. When you're done with the design, select your slideshow. From the Properties panel, change the ID to Quiz Slides. This will be used later in your code. Then click Manage Slides. Click Add New Slide at the bottom to add as many slides as you want for your quiz. Each slide will contain a question and possible responses. Remember to include one extra slide at the end to present the final result of the quiz. Now create your quiz. For each slide, add text for your questions and buttons for your answer choices. Play around with the design so it matches the look and feel of your store. When you're done, change the IDs of each element on your slides to use later in your code. Keep in mind, all button IDs should match the keywords you entered in the Product Keywords collection. When you're done, go to the last slide in your slideshow. Then click Add, Lists and Grids, and drag a repeater onto the last slide of your slideshow. This is where your recommended products will appear. Change the ID of the repeater to Recommended Products. Keep in mind, all images and text in your repeater are placeholders until you connect to your product's database. From the Properties panel, change the ID of the image to Image, the product name text to Name, and Price to Price. These IDs will be used later in your code. All of these elements will be used to present the final quiz results for shoppers. Now you're ready to add your code. To start adding functionality to your quiz, open the code panel at the bottom of the page. First, import the Wix data API. Then, define global variables for your code. Start by creating an empty array. This array will contain a customer's selected answers from the quiz. Call it Selected Answers. Then create an array of all your quiz answers. Make sure each of these items match their button IDs. Next, create a variable for the number of slides you have in your quiz. Now you can add code to collect and store customer responses. The $WOnReady function will run once all your page elements load. Set number of slides to the length of your slideshow using the length property. Then use the ForEach method to set what will happen when a customer clicks and selects their answer. For each response in the quiz, Add an on-click event that pushes the quiz answers ID to the selected answers array. 
Notice we used a backtick and not an apostrophe in the code. This is because the variable is contained inside of the string. Next, return to the editor and select your slideshow. From the Properties panel, click on the plus here to add an onChange event. This event will run every time a customer answers a question, moving them to the next slide. Since this function uses promises, define it as an async function. Now, this event will call additional functions as customers complete the quiz. Next, add an if condition to check if a customer completes the quiz using the isQuizFinished function. The function will get all the keywords related to each product from the product's keywords collection by calling another function, get keywords per product. Now, filter products that don't match your customer's responses using the for each method and calling the filter products per answer function. Then use the map function to extract the IDs of matching products only and add them to the selected answers array. Then call the get random items from array function to select a random group of products from the array. While the code panel may show some errors, you can disregard them. The errors will resolve themselves once you've added the code for these functions. Using the getProductsData function, the recommended product repeater populates with data based on customers' responses. In short, the function gets the full product data from your filtered product IDs to recommend a gift. Now it's time to write the function that will be used for your quiz. The isQuizFinished function will return a value of true if the current slide is the last slide. Because JavaScript arrays are indexed and numbered starting at zero, you'll subtract one from your number of slides. For example, an array with four elements is numbered from zero to three, the index value of the last slide being three and not four. Next, create the get keywords per product asynchronous function. In this function, you'll query the product's keywords collection from earlier. This function will only extract items from the query results and map them into an array of all your products. In this array, each item will have two properties, the product ID and keywords. Now create the filter products per answer function. This function has two arguments, quiz products, which comes from the previous function, and answer for filtering. The filter products per answer function reviews your array of products and filters out the ones that don't match keywords based on your customer's responses. Then it returns a filtered array containing only the relevant products. Since you may have several products that match the quiz answers, the get random items from array function will randomly select a predefined number of matching products to display in your recommended products repeater. This function also gets two arguments. Products are, which is filtered products from the last function, and number of items, which is the maximum number of items customers will see in the repeater. For this example, set the maximum number of items to the number of slides in the quiz, or four. Next, create an array and call it product IDs. This array will store your randomly selected product IDs. Create another variable for the number of products that were filtered called number of products. Then create a loop that runs for all the filtered products or the maximum items you want to show, whichever value is lower. Next, create a get random int function with minimum and maximum arguments. Zero will be used as the minimum value, while the number of products will be used as the maximum value. This function will generate an index for getting random items from the array. The items will be added to the product's IDs array and spliced out of the filtered array to avoid any duplication. Then this data will be returned to the main function for the final step. Now create an asynchronous function, getProductsData. This function uses the IDs of the recommended products and gets their data from the store's products collection to populate the repeater on the last slide. In the editor, select your repeater. From the properties panel, add an onItemReady event. This event triggers a function that will run for each item in your repeater with its corresponding data. Finally, add code to match the elements in your repeater with the data. Use $item to select and set each element to your item data. Note that we're using the $item selector instead of $w, so we can change each item in its scope without affecting items in the global scope. Nice, you're done with all the coding. Now it's time to check it out.
Return to the first slide in your quiz and click Preview to see your quiz in action. Test things out and find that perfect gift. Now you're ready. This video is always here, so come back and watch it again whenever you need help. You can also visit our resources page for tutorials, articles, example code, and more.